Hey there everybody, this is Jonathan of Nerdy Shogun here, and I wanted to start us off with another character analysis. This one of a character who I've recently grown fond of, especially after watching the recent two arcs of One Piece with Impel Down and Marine Fort and a full-fledged binge watch, which, as of right now, I'm currently still in the war, the post-war arc as of right now. So I've seen how it all ends with this character, and... Honestly, at this rate, Whitebeard has become one of my absolute favorite powerhouses of One Piece, just from the Marine Ford War arc alone. Now, I do know he gets expanded upon more in the post time skip arcs, where we see him in his prime along with Goldie Roger. However, I just want to focus on his character from the Marine Ford arc alone, as well as the little glimpses of him that we got throughout the first half of One Piece. And I've got to say, I absolutely love this character, not just because he is an unwarranted badass with absolutely broken abilities, but more than that, just his genuine character. And honestly, this there's many reasons why he's become my favorite. One, because he's a powerhouse, but two, because of his wholesome story and dreams that he had. And honestly... This made him one of my favorite characters, just from seeing his interactions with the people around him, from Straw Hat Luffy, to Shanks, to the various people under his command, and especially Port Gusty Ace. Whitebeard alone became a very fascinating character for me because of the fact that he was kept as an enigma. He was constantly hyped up as this absolute monster of a pirate, just this absolute powerhouse whom you did not cross unless you wanted your end to be absolutely horrendous and not very quick but when we finally see him on screen i was thoroughly impressed by him like you see this absolute giant of a man far past his prime on life support but even then he still refuses to ever bow to anyone and he never runs away from a fight and that is something that i can absolutely respect like by the end of the Marine Ford War arc, this man is literally covered with multiple gunshot wounds, stab wounds, and everything else under the sun, including two massive holes in his chest, one done by that dirtbag Admiral Akainu, whom I hate with a passion. And not just because he killed, killed two of my favorite characters, no. It's because of his general attitude that I hate him. But with Whitebeard, oh man, even then, this dude was a walking tank. Even despite the fact that he had... He was long past his prime, wounded as he was. This man did not retreat, and when he died, he died standing tall and proud, with his back unmarred by any retreats. That is when you know this man is someone who you'd want to follow, and he just gives off that aura of just, you respect him, but he also becomes a father figure to you, which a lot of his crew became sons to him, and... The fact that any crew member that he took on became a son to him, that was wholesome, especially when you hear him talking or reflecting on his dream when he was a youngster, first starting off as a pirate, and his main dream was that he wanted a family. And that is exactly what he built for himself over the years of his career as a pirate. He became one of the four emperors of the sea. And with that, he pretty much which gained the family he wanted as a massive armada of pirates. Hell, this man rocked up with an entire armada of ships and various pirates under his command, including those who swore their allegiance to him, all to assault Navy headquarters to save one of his commanders and one of his adopted sons, Port Gus D. Ace, the son of his greatest rival, Gold D. Roger. Now, if that isn't har harmonious irony right there, I don't know what is. Whitebeard described how he loathed Roger at times, how he was his greatest rival, and yet the fact that he went out of his way to save his rival's son after practically adopting him was so freaking sweet, which makes Ace's death hurt all the more when you realize he was just defending his father's honor. Well, let me rephrase that. Not his father's honor, his dad's honor. Ace absolutely despised Roger, to the point that the only father he would ever acknowledge was Whitebeard. That tells you a lot about Ace, but also how much Whitebeard was an impact to him. 
Ace grew up as a punk, and yet Whitebeard was the one who managed to soften him out and really get through his tough shell exterior and become the father Ace desperately needed. And we see how he has that impact on other crewmates as well. For instance, Squard. And I know a lot of people probably despise that man for what he did. It, but even then, after being stabbed in the chest by one of his own crew ooh, members, Whitebeard forgives him and just calls him his foolish son and hugs the man who just stabbed him. That tells you a lot about his compassion. And more importantly, his capabilities as a leader. And again, his devil fruit, the tremor tremor fruit, oh my god. This dude is able to summon up freaking earthquakes with a wave of his hand, or just generally leave you in a freaking crater. And by God, does he wield that power with tremendous, I want to say, skill. This man was able to create a sea quake following up a tidal wave to absolutely bombard Navy headquarters. And even then, when he was dueling Shanks in one of the earlier episodes... His power was going off the rails to the point that he was creating a storm from the fight that he was having with Shanks. And Shanks has immense abilities when it comes to Conqueror's hockey. Same as Whitebeard. But again, he was past his prime at this moment. And I've actually seen a few clips of him back in his prime when he was fighting Roger. Oh dear God. <laughs> if he had rocked up to Marine Ford in his prime, there would be nothing left but a pile of rubble. That is all I'm going to say about that. <laughs> But, again, this dude refused to go down. Like, I love the fact that he at least died standing on his feet like a man. Back unmarred, proud and tall, dying on his feet like that, saying, You know what? I am not going to fall before you. You aren't worth my time. And, I, and you are not a worthy adversary for me to fall before. But especially his rage when he sees Ace getting killed right in front of him after so much effort was made to try and save him. Seeing Ace being killed, not only for trying to defend and his little brother from Akainu's lava-covered fist, but also defending his honor when he was about ready to sacrifice himself for his sons just to give them a chance to escape and finally get Ace out of there. Just the sheer insurmountable rage he showed at that moment both scared me and was awe-inspiring to behold. I was cheering for Whitebeard to absolutely stomp Aka Inu when he saw that. And that moment when Aka Inu actually froze in fear, feeling Whitebeard standing behind him, eyes overshadowed, and you know this man is out to kill people. And he does so with a righteous vigor that was awe-inspiring to behold. And quite frankly, I do agree with Watch Mojo when they put Whitebeard versus Aka Inu as one of the biggest anime beatdowns. I thoroughly agree. <laughs> Just watching Aka Inu's face getting caved in by Whitebeard's singular punch to the point that there was a freaking crater from where he swung. That is terrifying, but also yes. At that moment, I was just saying, please, for the love of God, kill him. Which is why when I saw Aka Inu survive, I was absolutely enraged. And I really hope he does die a very painful death for what he did, not only to Ace, but also to Whitebeard. Like, Whitebeard was dying even further as the war escalated. Because this man was having his internal organs being cooked from the inside by Aka Inu's ability. Just imagining the sheer amount of pain he must have been in, and the fact that he was still swinging through sheer rage, that takes a tremendous amount of willpower. And even if he could no longer access his hockey, that tells you the sheer amount of will this man possessed. I know, I probably sound like an absolute fanboy, but can you blame me? Honestly, not gonna lie. If I ever decide to get any tattoos at any point in my life, I'm definitely getting one of the Whitebeard Pirates logo, because that logo is just really cool. But more importantly, it's because I love Whitebeard as a character, but also what his impact did for Ace. I love watching that moment, especially when Ace was reflecting on his backstory, when he was taken in by Whitebeard, was an absolute punk to everyone he met on the crew. But the fact that he was eventually willing to accept Whitebeard as his father and was even extremely scared to tell him about the fact that he was actually Goldie Roger's son, 
knowing the history that Whitebeard and Goldie Roger had. Knowing that, Ace still went to him, and Whitebeard, what does he do? He just shrugs it off and just says, Well, I thought you were going to tell me something more important. Last I checked, we're all children of the sea. That just goes to show that Whitebeard holds no beef with Roger, post-mortem. Sure, they clashed a lot of times, as major rivals will do, but I also really liked how there was a modicum of respect between the two of them. They were each other's match, and they respected each other other for it. Hell, I still love that scene where Gold Roger and Whitebeard were discussing over a cup of sake about the will of D. And what looks like a sakura tree forest. That was actually a really cool scene to see. And the fact that Whitebeard knew what he was doing when he shouted out his final words of the one piece is real. That moment alone when he confirmed that that treasure was real. Like the fact that he was one of the only ones who knew Roger personally. So he knew that treasure would re-spark the pirate era and create some more chaos for the Navy further down the line. He knew what he was doing. Yet his words sparked a powder or keg that had been building and building. But even then, the fallout from his death is immeasurable to see. Various societies who relied on him for, for protection, you see just how much they are going to suffer without him there and his crew to keep the peace. Because that is one thing Whitebeard did. He built up nations. He protected societies. He was a freaking beacon of protection for those who were willing to serve under him. And honestly, if I were to live in the world of One Piece, Whitebeard is definitely a man who I'd be more than willing to call my captain. If I ever had the option. Just, he was an amazing character. And I'm so sad to see him go. Which is why I'm really excited to see him further on back in his prime. Whenever I get to the arc featuring Gold Roger during his glory days before his death. I'm genuinely excited to see Whitebeard again in his prime during that time. And I, like if he was pretty strong even then past his prime as he was in Marine Ford. I cannot wait to see the absolute juggernaut he is later on in the series, back in his prime. Not to mention the humorous fact that he, he was known as Whitebeard, yet the only thing he had was that massive boomerang of a mustache. <laughs> Apparently the reason for that is because any facial hair here in Japan is considered to be a beard. Like just That alone is just a funny fact to me. Like The fact that you have a man named Whitebeard and all he has is that glorious mustache was absolutely funny as hell to me. <laughs> but speaking on the subject of Whitebeard, let's talk about his polar opposite, Blackbeard. Now I'm going to be definitely giving him a character analysis later on, on a future video, but I want to talk about a little bit of his impact with Whitebeard. Like Whitebeard straight up declaring that Teach was one of the few crew members he could never call his son after the sheer actions that he pulled of killing his division commander stealing a devil fruit and then going on to commit such atrocities as throwing ace under the bus just to be able to come to become a warlord of the sea oh <laughs> teach was definitely on white beard beard's list at that point and when i saw him beating down his former crew member i was gleefully thinking to myself yes please end this annoying nuisance please do like watching Blackbeard absolutely cower back away from Whitebeard, seeing his insurmountable rage was satisfying, which is why I was extremely angry to see Blackbeard get the chance to kill him and then steal his devil fruit. Oh boy, I can tell you right now, whenever I get to Blackbeard, it's going to be less of an analysis and more of a roasting of him as a character. But with all that being said, I hope you all enjoyed this video of me just rambling about a great character like Whitebeard, and I'm genuinely excited to keep doing more character analyses like this. Whether it's myself or Ray, we hope you all enjoy this series, and if you have any suggestions for characters you want us to either ramble about, or if you want us to analyze them a little more easily, please let us know. We are always open to suggestions, and let me know what you guys thought of Whitebeard. Do you think he's a great character? Do you think he's a bit overrated? Or do you think he's just there? Let me know what you all think down in the comments below. If you like what we do here, feel free to leave a like for this video. It always helps. Or if you like 
what we do here even then. If you just want to be with a bunch of nerds who are talking about their favorite things, feel free to subscribe. And we can promise you, if you want just a fun time with anime, video games, or even just memes, you've come to the right place. With all that being said, this is Jonathan of Nerdy Shogun signing off for now. And either myself or Ray will see you all in the next video. Ciao.